Hello everybody and welcome to Storytime with Fade and today we are reading Fatima's Great Outdoors. It's written by Ambreen Tarek and illustrated by Stevie Lewis. Let's jump right in and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Fatima's Great Outdoors. Fatima and her appa stood at the curb and waited for their parents to pick them up from school. Today, they weren't going straight home. Today, the Kazi family was going camping for the first time. Camping, her father had told them over dinner in his teaching voice, was a great American pastime. And just to let you know, the word appa in Hindi means an elder sister or an older one. The trip felt like Fatima's reward after a long, hard week. On Monday, some kids wrinkled their noses at her lunch. On Tuesday, someone in class laughed and told her it's pronounced fractions, not fractions. On Wednesday, a boy pulled on her long braid in the hallway. And on Thursday, she didn't do so well on her math quiz. Fatima smiled when her parents pulled up. The sisters piled into the car, squeezing in between pillows, blankets, and a big cardboard box filled with cooking supplies. Wow, this is a lot of stuff, Fatima yelled. Are we moving to the forest? Mama asked the girls in Urdu if they were excited as they reached back to hand them warm homemade samosas. The girls nodded vigorously with jack-o'-lantern smiles. Mama's samosas always tasted extra delicious on road trips. How about some Ghani? Papa asked. Muhammad Rafi's voice rose from the car speakers and Bollywood songs spilt out from the windows. Fatima's cares melted away as they all sang along in Hindi. And Ghani is another word for a song. Appa shouted over the music and announced to the whole car how well she has done on her math homework. Appa's teacher even asked her to come to the front of the class and solve a hard problem on the board that most of the other kids had gotten wrong. Shabash, Papa said with pride. Shabash also means like well done. Appa went on about school. Fatima slumped in her seat and ate another samosa. As Fatima thought about how to change the topic, her big sister pointed out the window and shouted, Look, we're here! The family cheered as they passed the sign for the state park. At the campsite, the girls helped their parents unload. First, Papa said, we must build our tent. Appa and Mama chose to start dinner instead. Fatima watched as Papa took the tent gear out of a sack. Papa grumbled in her due when the peaches wouldn't fit. Fatima wanted to help, but could she? She hadn't done anything right at school that week. What would make the campground any different? Fatima took a tiny step closer. She suggested to Papa that they read the instruction manual together. When they finished, Fatima stood proudly next to their brand new home in the forest. Shabash! Papa's bear paw clapped her shoulder. The Kazi family celebrated the start of their first camping trip over a delicious dinner of shami kebab and rojis that Mama had brought from home. After dinner, Fatima and Appa crawled into the family tent. They were so excited to snooze in their new sleeping bags. They never had rooms of their own, not even in India, so being together in one big tent felt cozy and right. The girls zipped up their sleeping bags and chattered on as their parents finished cleaning up. Appa was telling Fatima about how she won her class spelling bee when suddenly her face dropped. She gasped and pointed to the tent ceiling. Eight long giant legs gripped the outside of their tent. A monster, the girls screamed and huddled together. They cried out for Mama. She was fearless and would know what to do. When they lived in India, Mama would catch the lizards and throw them out without flinching. That's why she had that funny finger, Appa said. She had been getting rid of a scorpion from her house when it stung her. 
The monster moved across the roof and the girl screamed again. What's going on? Mama shouted over the sound of dishes being washed. The Kazis didn't use paper plates because they were too expensive. Mama, don't open the tent, Appa yelled. There's a giant poisonous spider monster outside. Don't be silly. It's tiny, Mama re replied impatiently. Go brush your teeth before bed. Mama held the tent door flaps and on the count of three, the girls ran out. They followed the same precautions coming back inside. One, two, three. They zoomed into their sleeping bags in a single fluid motion. That night, Fatima had a hard time falling asleep. Crickets chirped and wind blew against her tent. She flinched every time a twig snapped. But soon, as the tree swayed outside, Fatima's eyes got heavy and she drifted into a warm, deep sleep that only campers enjoy. Soft snores drifted outside the Kazi's tent and joined the sounds of the forest. The next morning, Fatima woke up to the smell of anda and roti cooking in ghee. Papa was waiting for her to make the bacon over a roaring fire. He had promised Fatima they could have bacon for breakfast just like the other American families. They had even made a special trip to the halal butcher shop for the beef kind. By hair ajao, Papa called for them to come outside. The sisters crept out slowly. Mama pointed at the top of the tent between chuckles. Go look at your big monster, she said. A harmless little daddy long lace sat quietly between beads of morning dew. It had been guarding them from mosquitoes all night. The girls laughed and laughed. Mama and Papa laughed too. Fatima was pretty sure the spider joined in as well. Let's start the campfire so we can make this smoky bacon you've been so excited about, Fatima, Papa said. Twenty minutes later, there still was no campfire. Papa grumbled under his breath in Urdu. The fire wouldn't catch. Fatima looked around at the other families, campsites, and they all had roaring fires. Why couldn't theirs look like that? Why did Fatima's family always have to be so different? She pouted and kicked rocks. Papa kept spraying lighter fluid on the logs. The fire would scream for a second and then it would be gone. Mama came over to see what all the fuss was about. She shook her head and clicked her teeth into disapproval, the way Fatima's aunties did. That's not how you start a fire. Let me show you, she said. A fire like, like strength takes patience to build. She made the girls gather twigs and dry leaves for kindling, then bigger sticks for tinder. Unlike Papa, who grew up in big cities in India, Mama came from a small town where they had to use a wood-burning stove outside to make chai when they ran out of gas for the inside stove. Fatima remembered visiting her nanny's house and helping one morning. Mama showed Fatima how to use a long metal pipe to breathe oxygen into the fire. That's how it comes alive, she had said. And chai is another word for tea. Fatima remembered that when it was her turn, she'd blown a giant puff of air into the fire, but no one told her not to inhale right after. She got a mouthful of smoke and started coughing. Her cousin had howled with laughter at the city girl. Well, now you know, Mama said, rubbing Fatima's back as she coughed. Fatima smiled at that memory and watched wide-eyed as Mama blew life into the campfire. Though Fatima hadn't built the fire herself, now she knew how. As the Kazi's family packed up, Fatima's heart felt heavy. I'm so sad, she told Appa. I don't want to go home. Home meant no laughing around the campfire or telling funny stories from India. Home meant no long road trips with fresh samosas and Bollywood sing-alongs in the car. Home meant taking tests, doing homework, getting in trouble, and being teased at school. Home meant Mama and Papa would be tired again from working long hours and two jobs each. Fatima looked at the tall trees and the big blue sky and the imprints in the dirt where their tent used to stand. Being outdoors reminded her of how she used to feel in India. She had fun. She didn't feel sad or scared. And she loved how adventure was around every corner. 
At the campground, Fatima felt like a superhero, but now had to leave it all behind. Appa rubbed Fatima's back and said, don't worry, we'll be back soon. Remember, you can share all this at show and tell. Fatima returned to school with stories of her great outdoors. Guess what? She asked her classmates. I am a superhero. I have lots of superpowers. I can build fires and tents, and I'm not afraid of spider monsters. Fatima beamed as she thought about what the Kazi's family next camping adventure would hold. Beautiful. What a lovely story. The end. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. See you soon.